Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Mason, and I'm going to speak a little bit about the life cycles of stars, which we begin with the formation of stars. And stars form from clouds of dust and gas out in space, what we call the interstellar medium, which we shorten to ISM often. So this interstellar medium is filled with mostly hydrogen gas, but helium also, and other uh, materials. All of the same stuff that we have here on Earth exists in stars and in the ISM. So for convenience, we sometimes describe stars in human terms. We can say that stars are born, they have lives, they die, uh, and the star formation is where we begin with the interstellar medium, about 90% hydrogen, 9% helium, 1% everything else. And we have to remember that uh, the interstellar medium is very cold. We have uh, molecules like hydrogen, two hydrogen uh, atoms making a hydrogen molecule, H2, water, carbon monoxide, ammonia, formaldehyde, all of these are common. And by looking at the spectrum of gas in the interstellar medium, we can tell what the material that the interstellar medium is made out of. And so let's think about the formation of stars and we wanna think about a, uh, the nebula, which is means a cloud of gas and a particular kind of nebula is the reflection nebula. It's a bright portion of the interstellar me medium, usually blue. It's the result of starlight being scattered off of dust surrounding the bright stars. The Pleiades here is an example. This is a cluster of stars. We can see with the naked eye this cluster of about six bright stars. And um, we see the with a photograph and a large telescope, uh, uh, we can see the blue nebula around it. So the bright stars are emitting light and that light is, the blue light is being reflected off of dust around those stars. And this is one way we know that these stars are young because they are still uh, um, surrounded by the gas and dust from which they formed. So another kind of nebula is the emission nebula, a bright region of the interstellar medium, very often red because of hydrogen. It shines by its own light. And uh, the way it works is that because the gas has been heated by nearby stars, it can become ionized. That means the nearby stars heat up the gas. There's some bright stars in here. This is the Orion Nebula. The bright stars heat up the gas separating the protons and the electrons. When the protons and electrons recombine back into hydrogen atoms, they emit red light. And uh, um, the Orion Nebula here is an example, and this can be seen with a small telescope. Uh, and uh, even the nebula can be seen with a small telescope. If we think about where the star formation is actually taking place. It's taking place inside what's called a dark nebula, regions of the interstellar medium that are cold and dense. This is uh, a, an image taken with the Hubble Space Telescope called the Pillars of Creation. And inside these dark nebulae are the place that stars are formed. And this is a giant molecular cloud, dark nebula containing enough matter to form tens of thousands or millions of future stars. Well, this is a small portion of that where uh, quite a number of stars are gonna form from this group. And we can see the stars that have already formed as well. Star formation triggers several processes can cause stars to form. If there's a supernova explosion, uh, a, a shock wave can go through a cloud forming many stars. If you have two giant molecular clouds that crash into each other, there can be lots of star formation right along that 
uh, front where they crash into each other. Winds from bright stars, very uh, young bright stars can emit a lot of uh, particles and, and have a flow of wind and that can cause star formation around them. And uh, if we want to think about looking at where uh, the stars are actually forming, these globules, also called block, Bach globules. Uh, here's a really nice one. There are these in here that are where stars are forming. They're dense. We can think of them as kind of like storm clouds, dense clouds of material. This is where the stars are going to form, uh, where there's already a lot of material. And then gravity clumps the stars uh, together, the material together to form stars. And so inside the giant molecular cloud, the globules are forming and collapsing. If we look at the HR diagram, these bot globules are cool and very large and red and dark. Uh, I mean, they, then they start dark and then they become red and they contract and move to the main sequence. And where they, their future depends really uh, primarily on the mass of the object during the protostar stage. This is an image taken by the ALMA radio telescope, and we can see that not only do we have a star forming here, but we have an entire disk of planets in the process of forming. The, uh, this is a protoplanetary disk, and the gaps are where planets are sweeping out material in the process of forming. And this, this is a very recent image and uh, with, the, with the ALMA telescope of the protoplanetary disk in uh, a star called HL Tauri. We can see the difference that wavelengths make when we are observing. We have a visible light that we can see with our eyes. This is infrared. With the Spitzer Space Telescope, infrared is not visible to us, but it is uh, able to travel through dust clouds, and we can detect objects that are uh, warm to hot objects through the dust cloud. So our, in, our visible picture of this Bach globule shows a dark region where we just can't see stars because it's too dense and thick. This same region inside the box here is shown and there is a protostar located inside there. So a star is forming inside there. So these are observations of actual stars in the process of forming today. Once the uh, protostar, it continues to collect material from the interstellar medium until it heats up enough that it will stop the flow of matter onto the star, then we call it a pre-main sequence star. And uh, here's another example. So very similar, we have the visible light. We can't see much, although a little bit of a jet is breaking through here. In the infrared, we can see that there is uh, a lot of activity. There's lots of stars being formed and uh, jets of material being formed. So these jets of material can form uh, that are bipolar coming out of the poles of the uh, material that is forming the protoplanetary disk in the late stages of star formation. So a pre-main sequence star continues to collapse. The core heats up. It moves from the top right of the HR diagram to a point on the main sequence. Where it, and where it arrives, importantly, on the main sequence depends on its mass. Because of the mass-luminosity relation for main sequence stars, the lower mass stars are here. The higher mass stars are up here. So where the where the uh, globule or the, and the protostar, and it finally becomes a pre-main sequence star, where it arrives in the main sequence just depends on 
how much mass it has. And so that is the uh, process of star formation.